Kids at Home with AJ. I'm glad that you could welcome the Kingsville Public Library into your home today and that you could join me in mine. Today we are going to be talking about cabbage and I'm actually going to give you three, four recipes for what to do with cabbage. Um, we were talking at the library the other day and we saw some pictures from one of the local food giveaways that are with a ton of cabbage left over, cabbage and potatoes. So I'll probably be talking about potatoes sometime later on this week or next. Um, and my husband and I had seen the pictures the night before and had the same conversation. Maybe people just don't know what to do with cabbage. Um, growing up, we didn't eat a whole lot of cabbage in my house. Um, so, so it was new to um, me when I started cooking for my family, um, but I love it. Of course, one of the reasons I love it, why? Because it's cheap. Um, the other reason, it's one of those metamorphic meals. Um, you, can, you can take one thing and, and make it a whole bunch of other things. And I'm actually going to show you three and a half things that you can do. <laughs> um, we're gonna make a, um, a crock pot cabbage roll. We're going to make some egg roll, yum. And I'm gonna show you how to make two variations of coleslaw. So go ahead and grab that cabbage out of the refrigerator and we'll get started. I have rinsed and dried my cabbage and depending on how your cabbage is, once you cut it up, you may want to um, wash it again before you use it. That's entirely um, determined by you and your cabbage. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cut your cabbage up. And when I worked at a restaurant years ago, I worked with a fabulous chef who was about no waste, no waste. That was her whole thing kind of ingrained into me. Um, and between that and growing up with a great grandmother who lived through the depression, I am big about no waste. So I am going to recommend that when you cut your cabbage, you actually turn it so that your core is facing up. You're going to take your knife, and I like to just quarter mine right around this core. That way you get as much of the cabbage as you actually can. Of course, the core of that center is, is kind of gross, and, and you don't want to eat that, but everything that you can get right up close to that portion of it, once you cook it, is going to be as delicious and fabulous as the rest of the cabbage. So the first thing I'm going to do is quarter my cabbage. I'm going to just go right down the side of that and then again then again and I just want to stay right close to that core and then right down there and I'm actually even going to for my crock pot cabbage I'm going to take of course you really can't see because I got all this cabbage piled everywhere um, but I'm going to take about this, this, so you can see here where it's kind of white and corey, yucky. Um, but I'm going to take this stuff off the top too because I'm not going to waste. So I'm going to go right about here, cut that off as well. So I have got the maximum amount of cabbage that I can get out of my head of cabbage. That's important, right? Get the most for your money. Um, because, again, uh, Dirt cheap. I, I picked up a head of cabbage at Aldi's the other day um, for just around a dollar. So you can't beat that, especially because we're going to squeeze three dishes out of this one head of cabbage. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is, um, and mine looks pretty good on side, but maybe I, uh, I will rinse it off a little more. Um, but I'm going to show you we're just going to take our cabbage and go ahead and slice it so that we have these nice thin pieces, okay? And then once you get your thin pieces, um, you're gonna divide it up. You're gonna make more than one recipe. Um, and if not, you're gonna throw it all in one pan. So let's get our cabbage sliced up and we'll go from there. So I have separated my cabbage, so to speak. I have my finer, not finer, shredded, but shredded sort of cabbage here. And I've got my other half that I have just chunked up because I'm actually going to shred that in a food processor um, and make it a little finer. If you don't have a food processor, 
you can always um, just to continue to chop it up finer or um, if you have a hand grater you can um, grate it uh, because this half we're going to make again some egg roll and some coleslaw with that so I'm just going to set that aside for a minute um, and actually I'm going to bring it back for a minute because if you notice um, a lot of what I have here is very pretty very green I've saved a lot of the green um, nicer more tender cabbage and over in this bowl I have a lot of the more white the little bit of tougher cabbage because that's the cabbage that's actually going to go into our um, crock pot cabbage roll and because it's going to sit in the crock pot and cook for a much longer period of time this this hard stuff is maybe not that go for your bowl um, will get softer and just again have that good cabbage flavor and you won't really be able to tell that it was some of the, the tougher whiter pieces um, you will want to pull out and I was actually going to save some of what's on my cutting board so that I could show you I didn't know I had one thrown in there I uh, mean it's always a good idea to sort through there um, these heavier spinier pieces the core um, that, that comes in there you'll want to pick those out as you're cutting um, but again a lot of this white stuff you can cut up um, to smaller pieces for your crock pot cabbage roll and uh, go ahead and cook it so now that we have our um, somewhat shredded cabbage here we're going to put together our first recipe which is our crock pot cabbage roll and remember the recipe will be down in the comment section of this video so you can get the um, exact measurements even though sometimes I don't have exact measurements um, because again this is another one of those that uh, go ahead and clean out the fridge throw some extra stuff in there um, no waste no waste right so we're going to take our uh, somewhat shredded cabbage and I'm just going to throw this into uh, my crock pot bag I of course have a crock pot liner in there if you don't that's just fine Make sure that you spray it first though because you'll be working with tomato sauce so get some uh, spray in there um, so once i have my cabbage in there i am going to throw my rice in i got my white rice hopefully you ran right out to the store and got your 20 pound bag of rice after my last video um, and if you didn't you can watch the rice video lots of things to do with rice um, you put tomato sauce in there you can use uh, just regular canned tomato sauce and add your own spices you can use a uh, jar of spaghetti sauce I actually have some leftover spaghetti sauce um, from a meal the other night so I'm gonna dump that in there first and of course I don't want any waste uh, throw some onion in here um, again I actually have some leftover onion and pepper from the other night so I'm gonna dump that in I probably will cut up another onion and put it in there because I feel that the onion in here is absolutely fabulous gives it a wonderful flavor but you don't want to watch me cut onions and cry like a baby um, I also have some ground beef uh, we had cooked this up the other night with the intention of having some tacos and that didn't happen fortunately I didn't season it with taco seasoning yet but with the tomato sauce it probably wouldn't matter you could throw it in there anyway um, I have also used Italian sausage in here um, ground chicken ground pork you can put any kind of meat you want to in here or you know the fabulous part is especially with times being what they are you don't have to put any meat in here um, this is gonna this is gonna make a fabulous dish whether you have meat in it or not it has a wonderful flavor to it um, so once I get my uh, meat in there meaty oh my goodness um, I'm also going to put some uh, stewed tomatoes in here I have canned tomatoes that I keep on hand uh, I'm gonna put those in normally I would use diced tomatoes um, but but these uh, have an expiration date of 2020 they're they're going in August of 2020 so got to use that up right we know don't want to waste it um, I'm gonna throw some brown sugar in there because again um, Anytime that you're working with a tomato based product you always want to put a little uh, sugar in there because the tomato does have a little bit of a bitter aftertaste that acidity and that sugar will help neutralize it and also that cabbage is going to have a little bite to it so that sugar is going to give it 
a little bit of sweetness to it. And then you can just season it with whatever you want. Of course, I'm going to throw some garlic in there because, you know, I like my garlic. Uh, we'll probably throw a little basil and uh, a little Italian seasoning in there. And then you are just going to put your broth in there. Um, and I have a handy dandy box of beef broth. So I am just going to put my broth in there. I'm going to pour that over top. And then once I pour it over top and throw my seasonings in, I'm just going to stir this up. I'm going to put a lid on it and let it cook on low for about eight hours. And when you take the lid off of this, actually before you take the lid off this, your whole kitchen's going to smell like delicious cabbage roll. Um, when you take the lid off of this, it's going to smell wonderful and it actually will taste just every bit of delicious. Thank you, boys. Um, they don't agree. They don't like cabbage rolls. They're not allowed to have cabbage rolls because it has onion in it. Um, but it'll taste every bit as delicious as a cabbage roll without all that hard work. So that's our cabbage roll casserole. I'm going to see why my dogs are acting so stupid and I will show you how to make up some coleslaw. So I have shredded my coleslaw very finely. I cheated. I used my food processor. I also uh, shredded my onion, which I'm going to throw in with my cabbage there. And uh, my carrot, which I also shredded in the food processor. If you do not have a food processor, again, you can use a grater um, or you can just shave it very thin by hand. It will work. So now we have our cabbage, onion, and carrot all kind of in there. And I'm going to mix that up just a little bit. It's all very finely chopped. That's one of the secret ingredients for this coleslaw if you want it to be like that delicious chicken place. Coleslaw is to get your vegetables chopped or shredded very fine. So then next we're going to make the slaw mix that will go into this. And again, the comments uh, will hold the recipe, so check the recipe there. You will need mayonnaise, not salad dressing, mayonnaise. Hopefully you know the difference. My daughter does not. There's a difference. Um, so we have our mayonnaise. We're going to add some sugar. We're going to add some milk. We're going to add some lemon juice, some vinegar, and some buttermilk. What? Wait, buttermilk? I don't have buttermilk on hand. I bake all the time. I never have buttermilk on hand. And what's funny, if you Google substitute for, buttermilk is one of the first three things that come up. Um, it's very easy to make a substitute for buttermilk. Um, if you have any vinegar or lemon juice on hand, and if you're making this recipe, you'll want to have one of those or both of those on hand because it goes in here. So by simply taking regular milk and adding um, about a tablespoon of vinegar or lemon juice will actually make that whole scientific acidity reaction you need to turn your milk into buttermilk. There's also um, some where you can take some sour cream or some yogurt and mess around with it to make buttermilk. So don't worry if you see a recipe that calls for buttermilk and you just don't throw it out the window and say, oh, I can't do that because I don't have any buttermilk. Buttermilk is probably one of the easiest kitchen substitutes there are. Cream of tartar is another thing you can put in there. So once we have our funky little coleslaw -y dressing stuff mixed up here. We're just going to pour it right over top of our cabbage-y, carrot -y onion mix. We're going to stir that up. And we're going to add a little pepper to it as well. So I'm going to get this stirred up. And this is actually best if it sits overnight because um, that gives the cabbage and the carrots time to soak up all that liquidy, yummy goodness that's your slaw dressing. 
So this is definitely a good dish if you're going someplace and you want to make something ahead. This is a good dish to make the day before. Or summertime is just around the corner. You want to have a little family get together, of course with social distancing. Um, but you want to make something um, the night before so that you can hang out and enjoy the nice weather and sit by the grill and watch your husband cook because that's what I like to do. Um, you can definitely make this the night before, let it sit in the fridge and it's good to go. So that's pretty well good and mixed up, looking pretty yummy. I'm just going to throw some pepper in there. And that will be ready to, you could eat it now, but like I said, it's best if you let it chill and let it sit. So I'm going to stir my pepper in there and then I will get that in the refrigerator. So the next coleslaw that we're going to do, I'm going to set that aside for one minute, is our Asian coleslaw. This is a really nice one to do um, because it's quick and simple. I've only made a little one because I, I don't know what I'm going to do with all that coleslaw plus this coleslaw. Um, and there wasn't quite enough cabbage to make both coleslaws, or maybe there was. Um, but my... Uh, my cabbage is a little wider sliced, as you can see. I didn't, I didn't grate it quite as fine. It's more of a shredded salad kind of thing. And I have carrots in there, and I put red onion in there just because it's prettier that way. Um, but the simple recipe, and again, it'll be in the comments, for an Asian coleslaw is to take your cabbage, your carrots, your onion, and you can certainly put some other stuff in here. You know, you, you get that broccoli in there, then you got a nice broccoli slaw. But it is, this is the easiest thing in the world. You don't even need a recipe for this. Um, the recipe that I have calls for equal amounts of vinegar, oil, and sugar, okay? And there's, there's a couple things I like about this. Um, one, because you can use your leftovers. If you don't have a lot left over, yay, you know I like that. Um, your vinegar, you can use red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Any kind of vinegar will work in this and it'll be absolutely fine. Um, your oil, olive oil, or if you uh, don't have that, you can use a little vegetable oil or canola oil. Um, if you use vegetable oil, don't use quite as much of an equal amount because it'll be too heavy. Um, and here's the other thing I like, your sugar, okay? Um, you, don't, you don't have to use equal amounts of sugar. Add the sugar a little bit at a time, toss it in there, get it to where you like it. Some people don't like it as sweet. Um, and that's what makes this really great is you can determine the amount of oil um, and sugar that goes into the slaw dressing, which makes it very fabulous. So if you're watching what you eat or if you, you know, have a particular taste level, um, this is wonderful. And we're just going to put this in um, and mix it around until you have this lovely little mix then we will just pour it over top of our vegetables um, and toss it around and again because it's just equal amounts and, and you can also add a little pepper or you know a, a little bit of ginger in there all kinds of things to give it a fun little kick um, and when you start playing around with the spices it gives it a, a different taste um, so depending on on what you are serving this with um, We'll, we'll determine what you want to season it with. Garlic, garlic, of course, is always fabulous in this. Um, just depends what you like. Um, but again, you know, you can back off on the oil a little more and add a little extra vinegar to it. You can use both um, red and white vinegar in it. It gives it an interesting taste. Um, there's lots of variations for this, um, which is why I absolutely love it. And there's no cut and dry recipe. Because you're using equal amounts of you can kind of eyeball it and see how much liquid do I need in here. Um, let me start with just a little bit and I can always mix some more up so that you're not wasting anything because no waste, no waste. Um, and you're using up again your leftover vegetables, whatever you got, you can mix it up and make it happen. So those are our two coleslaws. Let's make some egg rolls. Okay, I've busted out the wok for our next... We're going to do some egg roll now, which... Um, is always delicious, right? And it's not something that a lot of people make at home from scratch. So I'm going to show you kind of the cheater's version to do it. There's a couple different ways you can do this. 
um, but I think this is kind of the simplest and easiest way to do it and kind of healthy. Uh, I'm going to grab some butter here real quick. Hold on, don't go anywhere. Grab some butter. Um, so, uh, and that is going to get smoky, it always does. Um, hopefully I won't sweat off the smoke alarm. I like using this little electric burner um, because then you can kind of see better, but uh, it also, the heat is kind of funny on it. So I'm going to throw that butter in there. That'll probably really get things rocking. Woo! Um, the reason that I'm going to cook my vegetables in butter, you can see past the smoke that I'm giving off there, um, is because we're, we're actually going to wrap these in uh, some dough. And so we want the, the moisture to be uh, as little as possible. So instead of cooking these in broth like I normally would do, uh, I'm just going to put them in a little butter. And, and I love the wok because you can kind of just dump everything right in there. So I'm just going to dump my vegetables in there. I'm going to kick those around. I'm going to add a little garlic, of course. Big surprise there, garlic. A little bit of pepper. We'll just sprinkle a little bit of pepper around in there. And a little bit of soy sauce. A little bit of our reduced sodium soy sauce. You don't want to get, again, not too much in there because you don't want a lot of liquid in here. Um, and if you do end up getting a lot of liquid, because sometimes, you know, carrots and onions have more moisture than they do other times. Um, if that's the case, when you take it off of the burner, um, just go ahead and put it into a strainer or a colander, let it sit for a few minutes and just drain off until it dries up a little bit. Because um, it's going to have to, you know, sit for a minute while we work with our dough anyway. Now what's really great about this um, filling is that you don't even necessarily have to put it into a dough if you don't want to. Um, this works fabulous just as is as a wonderful side dish. Um, very low calorie, um, getting your good serving of vegetables there for the day. Um, so that's, that's something to think about if you're looking for a fun dish to just put out there as something different. And especially, uh, you know, if you like uh, Chinese or Asian food, this is kind of a nice dish to put out there and then add a little sauce to it and see, you know, what maybe different flavors you can bring out by adding different sauces. Um, and while we're cooking these um, and moving them around, we're not going to cook them completely. We're just going to want to get them sort of on their way to tender. They're going to be just slightly tender. We don't want to overcook them because, again, we're going to be putting them into a dough and then cook them some more. So at this point, you only want them partially cooked so that while they're... Uh, going through their next stage of cooking, however you decide to cook them. Um, you won't want to overcook the inside so that it becomes all mushy and gross. Um, and, and how you prepare them in the next step will kind of determine how long you cook them here. Um, I'm actually going to show you how to bake yours um, because I, I think it's easier. And it's one of those things that you can kind of put together and then go work on something else. So if you were going to serve up egg rolls as a side dish, um, you could actually get this filling going, stick it in the oven, and then work on something else. Um, you can fry them on the, the stove in some oil. I have actually put them in a panini maker, depending on what kind of dough you use, um, and, and done them up that way. They're, granted, they're a little flat, but you know, still it's got the same yummy taste actually sometimes it's a better taste or if you're going to deep fry them and that's where if you're going to deep fry them um, you're definitely going to want to take a little bit of cooking time off of that um, because obviously that hot oil is going to cook things very well and very fast um, so it just kind of depends what kind of dough you're using and what your next step is going to be I am going to show you when we put this in dough I'm going to show you the cheaters method so you can get this done fairly quickly without a lot of work. 
um, which is always a good thing, right? So I feel that my vegetables could maybe, uh, we'll cook them a little bit longer, maybe a minute or two longer, but everything's getting good and mixed up in there. Mm, it's starting to get tender. And you'll be able to tell as your, as your cabbage kind of starts to lose that, that stiffness to it, that's when you're gonna wanna take it off of the, the heat and get ready for the next step. But we got a couple minutes yet. I have a hard time kind of regulating this electric little burner. I haven't gotten quite used to that yet. And y'all will have a chance to use these when the library reopens. Because once we get up and running, we'll be having food class again. Yes, eats, treats, and trivia. So make sure to be watching for that. It'll, it'll be a while yet, but you know as soon as we can, as soon as it's safe, we'll be doing it. So I'm going to cook these just a minute or two longer, and then I'm going to show you how to roll them in the dough. We're going to talk about dough and then eat egg roll. Yum. I almost forgot to tell you. And if you wanted to, at this point, you can add some meat into here. And I have some ground sausage that I'm actually going to add in here um, and stir that around. So again, at this point, if you wanted to put some you know, chicken or sausage or whatever you got hanging around, now's a good time to throw it in there. this around and then we'll get rolling. So now we need that shell for our egg roll and they've got a couple different options out there um, and so it just depends on how talented you are, how ambitious you are, what's your budget, what do you want to spend. Um, I'm going to use the cheaters method, one of the cheaters methods. Um, I've actually got refrigerated pie crust that I pick up at Aldi's. I love it because it's around a buck a box. You get two lovely pie shells in the box. Um, it's definitely much cheaper than phyllo dough. Um, and I think it's a little easier to use, especially um, when you're working with, with filling your own egg roll. Um, phyllo dough is another uh, option that if you wanna buy that at the store. Um, I find it kind of expensive. Actually, I find it really expensive for what you get. Um, I think it's really expensive. Um, and I, I, I don't think it's worth the money most of the time. Um, and the other option, of course, is you can make your own phyllo dough or your own pie crust. Um, that's totally up to you. Um, but for this recipe, and because generally if I were making egg rolls, I'm probably going to um, continue to use my wok because I'm probably going to make a stir fry maybe. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to use this one so I can get it in the oven and go back to cooking. So I have taken my refrigerated pie crust out. I have put it on my little uh, baking mat. If you don't have a nonstick baking mat, you can just use some wax paper, or if you have um, a vinyl tablecloth, those work very well. You just flour your surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my rolling pin, and I'm just going to roll this pie crust just a little bit thinner. Pie crust is one of those things that once you get the hang of it, it's a very simple thing to make. And normally I have some in the freezer. I keep my pie crust in little dough balls and have some in the freezer, but I couldn't seem to find any. And it may well be that it's just buried under some of my other stuff. Um, so once you have your pie crust rolled out thinner, you're just going to take a knife and you're gonna slice it into rough little rectangles kind of thing. So you're just gonna go right along there very carefully, not too deep, because you don't wanna cut your silicone mat. And we'll cut those into rectangles. So once you have your dough cut into long rectangular strips, you're actually going to take your rectangular strip and just cut it in half. And then you're going to take your two halves and lay them in almost like a cross piece. So you have one over top of the other, but this one is kind of off-centered more towards that. And it's really not that important other than it just makes your, your uh, egg roll a little prettier. We're going to take a scoop of filling. If I can do it 
scoop of filling on this spoon. We're going to take a scoop of filling. We're going to put it right in the center of that little cross area that we just made. I might have a little bit too much filling there. I don't know if you can see that better. I'm going to catch it on the side of the camera. So we're going to put that on there. And then we're going to take these far ends first. We're going to fold them up over top of our mix, just ever so slightly. It doesn't have to cover the whole thing, um, but as close as you can get, it makes a nice tighter egg roll that way. And then we're going to pull up our far ends. So we kind of have it like this so far. Now we're going to pull up our other ends, but we're going to take our longer end first and bring that over and bring our sh other small end up underneath so that now you have sort of like this little square. And then I like to use a little bit of butter spray just because that gets the dough a little moist and it makes it easier to stick the dough together. And you're just gonna pinch those openings that you see as best you can. And then just go along and pinch the openings. And sometimes the dough rips, just try and grab some more from the bottom. You know, or worst case scenario, you shave some more off of what you got over on your cut pad. And then I just kind of give it a little squeeze um, to get it in that long sort of log shape. Um, you can also use a fork to kind of press down your edges if you want to. I have a hard time doing that. I just end up poking the, the dough and the filling comes out and, you know, it's just a disaster. Um, so then we have a lovely little egg roll. We put that on a tray. And then once you have a full tray, we put some egg wash on them, which is going to be simply um, an egg yolk whisked up and brushed over the top of that. And we will pop them into the oven until they're golden brown and crispy. So one head of cabbage goes a long way. We've got our delicious egg rolls our Asian coleslaw, our traditional picnic coleslaw, and our lovely crock pot cabbage rolls, ready to eat without all the hard work. So the next time you see that cabbage on sale, make sure that you're buying a couple heads. Thanks for welcoming the Kingsville Public Library into your home today and for joining me in mine. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share so that your friends can become our friends. And let us know who's watching. We want to know. If you tried this recipe, please post a picture in the comments. Let us know how you did. And we'd love to hear your feedback. You can email us, reference, at kingsvillelibrary.org. Stay safe, stay well, practice that good social distancing, and we'll see you real soon.